But I just wanted to mention where this uh, where this message was kind of birthed from, because I can't give you something that hasn't been stirring in me. Okay, so God's birthing some things in me. He's speaking to me, and so I'm just gonna, in a sense, just deliver what I feel like He's doing in me to you. But um, you may remember a couple of weeks ago when I sent out a, a kind of a word about um, the Lord saying we need to watch our steps. And I'll just, I just thought I would read just a little bit of that. So, Lord, I just want to thank you that you released this word to us about watching our steps. And you said, I'm taking you higher. I'm taking you up and, and out. But you must watch your steps. Walking without watching will cause you to trip and fall. Watch me, says the Lord. Look at me. Keep your eyes on me. He says, what looked like a setback is actually a setup. And it's a step up the staircase. So just keep stepping, keep climbing, um, and stay steady in September. So the Lord released that a few weeks ago, and then out of that, I feel like he birthed this message in me. So I want to give you this message. It's called The Mountains Are Calling. So yeah, the mountains are calling. That is the title of this message today. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Come on, he wants to take us higher. He says, who's going to ascend to the hill of the Lord? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts. Those are the ones he's going to take up higher. And the mountains are truly calling. Now, when I say the word mountain, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Mountains. Big. High. Climb. What? Clouds. Okay, yes. A lot of things come to mind when you hear the word mountains. Uh, for me, when I hear mountains, uh, I think of vacation because I've gotten to go to a lot of mountains. And, and that's only because the Lord has blessed me. And um, I didn't get to go to mountains as a child. Uh, we didn't really get to go on a vacation very often when I was a child. Hardly ever, Mom and Dad, thanks. There's <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> but as I've gotten older, and uh, the Lord has blessed Robert and I, and we've seen a lot of mountains. We've seen the Ozark Mountains, which I'm sure, I hope everybody in here has seen the beautiful Ozark Mountains of Arkansas. I got to see the Grand Canyon. Anybody seen the Grand Canyon? It's, it's, it's awesome. It's big. It's big. It's a mountain in California. I got to climb that one. I didn't actually climb. I just went a few, a few feet up with my friend Christina and Donna Norton. We, we stood on the, the, at the bottom of the Shasta Mountain in California. Um, and then I got to see Mount Rainier in Seattle back in 2004. That was actually the first mountain that I'd really ever seen personally. It took my breath away. It was beautiful. And um, I've seen Pikes Peak uh, in Colorado and the Teton Mountain Range and Wyoming. And I just can't even believe I've seen all those mountains. It blows me away. I got to think about all the mountains I'd seen. And I just had to thank God. That he's allowed me to see all that. He's good. He's so good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But you know what? Mountains are exhilarating. They're beautiful. They're a sight to behold. But I want to tell you and show you a few pictures of a mountain that was really my favorite mountain of all. And it was not, you know, snow-capped or, um, you know, just so amazing, actually, but in the natural but in my spirit, it was the best mountain ever, and that was the mountain in Haiti. And so I've got a few pictures up here that I want to show you in a little video clip. This is the mountain in Haiti that some of us um, actually climbed. I had the privilege of going twice and going up this mountain. Let's see if it's going to work. Oh. The, the next slide, maybe. I'm being bothered. <laughs> It up. I'm about We're up. going to the top of that mountain. <laughs> Lord help us. <laughs> we can do it, Amber. We can do it. We did it. <laughs> There's a few more pictures we're going to show you. Man, that was a special trip. Special mountain. It was hard to climb. 
Look at there, Christina made the trip. There was a purpose in this climb up that mountain in Haiti. There were some unreached people up there. Miss Diane was on that trip. <coughs> unreached, unreached kids. There was a school at the top of that mountain. That was the most rewarding mountain that I've ever been There was a lot of me part of the journey. It was, it was amazing. Because there was a need. And we were a group of people that said we will climb. We will go there. And a lot of the missionaries uh, that would go to Haiti, um, they, they didn't want to climb that mountain. So uh, those children didn't always get all the candy. They didn't get the balls and the toys and the backpacks and things. It was, they just didn't get it because people didn't want to hike the mountain. But we had a fearless leader named Pastor Toussaint, and he would travel there often, uh, several times a week. I don't know if he, tra if he did it every day, Terry, do you remember? But he went, all, he went a lot. Like he was the pastor of the mountain, but he didn't live up on the mountain. So he would make the hike you know, back and forth a lot to get to those people. Um, so God is the God of the mountain. He's also the God of the valley. Amen. And you know, when you think about mountaintop experiences, the Bible is full of them. We could have had a series, Justin, called The Mountains Are Calling. And we could have broke this down for six weeks or more, you know, and just talked about all these mountaintop experiences that our Bible heroes had. But, uh, you know, you go to the top, but what goes up must come. And so I just want to highlight the fact that a lot of times it's not the climb up that's so hard and strenuous, even though it is. But did you know that coming down a mountain is very hard? It's very hard on your knees at times. And it can be very slippery. So coming down can be very hard. And coming down off of a mountaintop is also emotionally hard. Have any of you ever had a real high, you know, not not high, but you know, a high, like your son gets married and you work and you get a beautiful wedding together and then the day after you just cry like a baby all day long and you're just all just a hot mess. It was a mountain top that didn't happen too long ago, so I'm, it's fresh. So there's those mountaintop experiences and then it's like you come down and you're just like, uh-uh. So let me just tell you about a couple of men of God in the Bible that had those mountaintop experiences like Elijah. You know his story. He defeated the prophets of Baal, of Baal on Mount Carmel. I mean, he had a victorious time on the top of that mountain. I mean, miracle after miracle what kept happening up there. But then on his way down, <coughs> he began to get weary. He, he, he began to uh, fall into a little bit of depression because at the bottom of the mountain, there was a woman named Jezebel. And there she was, just a little old demonized woman. And he had been up on the mountain seeing miraculous things. And he comes down and he sees Jezebel. And then he just wants to kill himself. He's at the bottom. So the climb down was hard for him. Okay, then there was Moses. You know that story. He climbed to the top. He met with God. He received the Ten Commandments. And he's all excited. And he's coming down the mountain. And he's like, Aaron is taking care of them down there. Everything's going to be glorious when I get down this mountain. Uh, Y'all know what happened. There was a golden calf. Things didn't go so well. So he comes down the mountain. And he is so disappointed. He is met with the people worshiping the golden calf, and he becomes very angry to the point that he just crushes those stones and throws them to the ground. So there are times that coming down the mountain is sometimes even harder than the going up. Can I get an amen on that one? But God is the God of second chances. So see, he asked Moses to climb that mountain again. He did. Has God ever asked you to go up a second time? Has he ever asked you to try something one more time? 
It might not have worked out the first time, but then he said, come on, make the climb. You can do this. Um, and that's what Moses did. He didn't, he didn't argue with God and say, I'm not doing this. These are rebellious people. I was gone 40 days, and, and this is what I came back to. So you, God, you expect me to go back up there and bring something back down to these rebellious, hard-headed people? You know? But you know what? He, he, he did it. He did it. So I'm asking you, I'm, the Lord is asking you today, will you make the climb? The mountain is calling. Will you make the climb? Will you go up? It might be your second time, your third time. But even though we fall, we get back up, right? Yes. So the mountains are calling us. God is saying it's time to go higher. You know, uh, Moses said, God, hide me in the cleft of your rock. He saw God's provision. He saw God's protection. He saw God. There's a reason. There's a purpose in which God wants to take you higher. And so Jesus said, come, follow me all the way to the top. I've paid the price. I've made a way for you to arise and shine. I've made a way for you to ascend unto my holy hill. Jesus wants us to remember that he made a climb. He made a climb to Mount Calvary. And he carried the cross. And he bled and he died for us. And then it says that the temple veil was torn in two. And that happened so that you and I can meet with God. We don't have to go through the priest. We don't have to go through the sacrifices of a lamb or shedding blood. Jesus shed his blood and he made a way so we could enter in. And we could go all the way up. All the way up. And you know what? All he's saying is, whosoever will may come. Are we going to come up to where he's calling us? The first step is salvation. The first step is acknowledging what he did for us. Because there is an upward call. There is an upward call. And we read about that upward call in Philippians 3. Philippians chapter 3, he talks about the upward call. And so you know I like visuals, right? Because I love working with kids. <laughs> I love y'all too. But I did bring my visual. I brought my ladder. Actually, Suzanne brought hers. So I got my friend Edgar. He's got his backpack. We're going to bring Edgar right here to the front. And you know, sometimes we just get the point a little better if we can see. So I'm going to read this scripture. And Edgar's just going to kind of act it out for us, okay? So Jesus, he's asking us to press. He's asking us to press toward the upward call, okay? And Jesus said, I know you're not perfect, but I want you to come up here. I know you have not laid hold of the fullness of who I am, but I want to show you myself. I want to show you who I am. I know you've not been able to comprehend all that I have waiting for you at the top. I know your struggle is real, but I'm asking you to come up here. I want you to stop being content at the bottom. Stop being content at the bottom. Are you willing to give up so you can go up? I want you to stop looking up from the bottom and just waving at the crazy people at the top. Anybody ever done that? I'm just going to stay down here and let those crazies get those prophetic words. I'm going to let those crazies get over there and pray in the spirit and prophesy. But I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to glean from them. I want what they're hearing, but I'm not going over there. I'm not going up that mountain where the crazy people are. I'll just wave out from the bottom. Y'all know what I'm talking about? <laughs> All right, and sometimes we think, oh, that spiritual climb is just for the pastors and the leaders. No, he's saying you can prophesy. He's saying you can hear from me on your own. I'm the good shepherd, and my sheep hear my voice, meaning you can hear his voice, right? That meaning, man, he is doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Edgar, he's 
saying, I want you to press on. I want you to climb. So let's start that climb. He says, I want you to stop standing at the bottom, wishing you had the strength to get up the mountain. He says, I'm going to strengthen your knees. I'm going to strengthen you. You may feel like you don't have the courage, you don't have the strength, but he's going to strengthen your knees and he's going to get you up there. There is a re There's no reason to be afraid of heights. Listen, sometimes we're afraid of heights. Have you all ever been afraid of heights? Huh? Have you been afraid of spiritual heights? And you're just like, God, I'm not saying yes to that. I am not going to say yes to that. You want me to teach Sunday school? Have you lost your mind? <laughs> you want me to sing? You want me to do whatever? But he says, don't be afraid of heights. I'm going to be with you every step of the way. He said, I want you to forget all of those things which are behind you. Edgar, he's saying he wants you to let go of the past. Get rid of that backpack, brother. He's saying, let go of all the things that have been holding you down. Forget all those things and, 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 and press towards. I want you to forget all those things which are behind you. I want you to forgive all the people who have hurt you. Oh, Edgar, can you do that? Forgive all the people who have hurt you. I want you to reach, stretch towards the things ahead. Come up higher and receive the more costly and valuable things. Look at him. He made it up there. Oh. He made it up there. All right, you can come down. Thank you so much. But I do want to keep going on this. Because the valuable things, the things that are costly, God puts up high. You hear me? How about, have any of you had children and they want to crawl? Aaron is, my son Aaron is in this, this stage with our little granddaughter, Audrey. <clears throat> she's climbing. I mean, not, well, she's crawling. She's crawling. So he's at a place, and, and most of you parents have been at a place where when they start crawling, they start grabbing everything. <laughs> and then they start walking, and then they start getting everything. So what do we do as a parent? We put everything up because it's valuable. Okay, God says come up higher because there are some valuable things up here. There are some valuable things up here. And I'm not going to give it to you down here while you're wallowing in this sin and you're wallowing in this shame. He says come up here to the valuable things. They're costly things. But unless you are mature enough to handle it, I'm not going to give it to you. You can whine and cry at the bottom of the mountain, but if you want the things that are valuable, then you've got to come up high. You've got to mature yourself in the Lord. You've got to learn the word. You've got to get in his presence and come up higher so he can give you the valuable things. Amen. And then that's the end of that scripture in Philippians 3, 13 and 14. It goes on to say, press toward the climb of uh, the goal. Press towards the goal and win the prize. Press toward the upward calling. That's what we're after, the upward calling. But you know what I have found? There is a downward craving. We got an upward calling from the Lord. But our flesh is weak. And we have a downward craving. That wants to keep pulling us down into the, the mess of this world. That wants to pull us down where all the noise is. Where we can't really hear from God. We feel like we can stay down and deal with the downward calling. And, but you know what happens? You just start getting wore out. There's the upward calling and the downward craving. And oh, I'm telling you the Lord says let it go. There are some things we need to let go. We need to forgive. We need to get rid of sin. Oh, help us, Lord. We need the fear of the Lord to return. Fear of the Lord to return. I'm not talking about being scared of God. I'm talking about being reverent to the Lord to the point that this upward call is so important. I want to press towards you, so I've got to leave these down cravings alone. Help us, Lord. In Psalms 119, verse 112, it says, I will set my heart to do your will. Now, that does not mean I will recline my heart. 
I'm just going to set my heart and I'm just going to recline and kick back. No. Setting your heart means that you are inclining. I'm going to incline my heart to the Lord. I'm going to go up higher. That means I've got to come out of the recliner and I've got to embrace the incline. Body of Christ, we must do this in, the, in this hour. People are looking at us. Many are looking at the church saying, this is a joke. They want to prophesy on Sunday. They want to preach to the thousands. But then they go out and they get in sexual sin and their, their name is on the newspaper and all over Instagram and everything else. Because they cannot go, they cannot leave the downward craving alone. Because they refuse to incline their heart unto the Lord. Come on church, we can do better than this. We can do this. We can make it to the top. And not so that we can say, hey, look at me, da-da-da, my church, da-da-da. It's not about that. If we're going up, but we want everybody looking at us, guess what? A fall is coming. A fall is just around the corner. Because the word says, if he will be lifted up, he will draw men unto himself. It has nothing to do with you and me. Amen. It's all about him. Oh, Jesus, we want you to be lifted up in this house. Be lifted up in this house. We're going to do what Colossians 3, 1 through 3 says. We're going to set our hearts on things above, church, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. We're going to set our minds and our affections on things above, not on these earthly things. For, for you died for us, Jesus, and we want to be hidden in Christ. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you're taking us higher. You know, every Bible hero had to incline their heart. They, they had to persevere. They had to endure. They were called out. They were set apart. Those men and women in the Bible are there for an example for us to follow. If they had to do it, what makes us think that we are, are exempt? We are not exempt. And we're not exempt from the test. But we don't want to be tested, do we? I hate tests. Some people, uh, they crumble under the pressure of test. But remove that off the body of Christ God. Remove that. We will pass the test. We will run the race and we will keep the faith. And we will finish the race. So these men and women of God, they had to climb. And they had to come out and be separate. They had to pass test. And, you know, we have many of examples of the men and women of God that failed the test, right? I mean, we got like Samson, we got David. <laughs> they were on the right track and then boom, they, they crashed, you know. But they didn't burn. <laughs> they crashed, but they didn't burn. Sometimes we crash, but we're not going to burn, right? Because we're going to keep going higher. All right. So God is not testing us to punish us. We need this revelation. The test that comes from the Lord is not to punish you. It's there to promote you. That's hard to believe, isn't it? God, you're going to test me? What is this about? You're trying to discipline me, God. You're trying, you know, what's happening in my life? I'm being so tested. But it's really to promote you. He's cheering you on saying, you will pass this test. You know, when you're 16-year-olds, sometimes before they ever get 16, they're ready to go take a driver's test, right? They take the written test, then they go take the, the actual driving test because they want the keys. Okay? Those young people will take the driving test because they want the keys. God wants you to pass your test because he wants to give you the keys to your next. Somebody needs to hear that. 
We've got to pass the test. we got to be willing to take the test. Because he wants to give us the keys that will help us get to our next. And so I want to actually look at um, Abraham's climb that you find it in Genesis 22. And so if you want to pull your phone out, pull your Bible out, and go with me to Genesis 22. i got to speed this up. Going to Genesis 22, we're going to see that the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. Even when they're painful, even when they're confusing, the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. Abraham was called to take a, a three-day journey, but that three-day journey probably felt like three years. But God was calling Abraham higher. And this climb is not about accumulation. The church is missing it. The climb is not about accumulation. It's about consecration. And we don't want to preach that. Oh, no. We want to preach how blessed you can be. We don't, we don't really want to talk about the consecration part anymore. We just want to accumulate things. Oh, if you give to this ministry. Five, and and I'm, I'm all about giving. Please give. <laughs> uh, I'm all about fasting and praying. We need to be doing those things. But he wants to take us up, not so we can accumulate all this stuff, but so that we can be consecrated unto him. Does that bear witness with your spirit? We're not trying to go up and climb more so we can get more. The only thing, or get more things, the only thing we need to cl be climbing for or to achieve is Jesus, okay? So in this story with Abraham, I want to focus on four steps that Abraham went through to get to the top, okay? The first one is location. We're going to read this passage in a second. But the passage starts with location. And then it, the Lord tells him, I'm, I'm going to show you your destination. So we're starting at location. I'm going to give you the destination. Then there's going to be a preparation. And when you've done these things, then you're going to receive a revelation. Now that's what happened in the life of Abraham in this chapter, or in, in yeah, in, in chapter 22. Genesis 22. So here it reads. We're going to start out with the location. Uh, the Lord calls out to Abraham. Abraham, where are you? Abraham had to acknowledge where he was. He answered the Lord. He said, here I am. I'm at this location right here. 1400 Centennial Lane. That's where I'm at right now. <laughs> You're calling my name and this is where I'm at. Okay. He acknowledged his location. See, a lot of times we want to skip that part. And we, we have a tendency to skip that part because we don't really, we don't want to think about where we really are at. Okay? So he calls out his name, Abraham, where are you? And Abraham replies, here I am. So we must admit where we are. I'm at the bottom. I've made some mistakes. I've taken matters into my own hands several times lately. This is Abraham talking to God <laughs> when he's calling his name. He might have said, you know, God, I sent Hagar and Ishmael away. Yeah, I've blown it. I'm down here at the bottom. Yeah, hadn't been doing so good, God. I know you're calling me upward, but I made some mistakes down here. He admitted his location. And then God says, I'm going to take you to the mountain. I'm calling you up. He said in, in verse 2, he says, Then God said, Take your son, your only son. Oh, wait a minute. I just told you there was an Ishmael, right? There was another son. But God says, No, take your only son. Your promise. Take your promise. Take it on up the mountain. Take Isaac. And go to the region of Moriah and sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain that I will show you. 
A lot of times we want to climb the mountain, but we want to pick the mountain. We want to pick our own mountain. I'm going to go up with God, and I feel like I'm called to be a preacher. I'm called to be an evangelist. I'm going to pick my mountain. I'm going higher. Come on. Let him pick your mountain. Amen. The only way you're going to get up there is if you are climbing the right mountain. I have climbed the wrong mountain a few times in my life. Have y'all ever done that? All right. Well, I bet Abraham was thinking, this does not sound like you are taking me higher. This sounds like I'm going to be coming down. <laughs> you want me to take my promise? This is a test, and it feels like punishment because of Ishmael, because of all my mistakes. God's not trying to punish you. He just wants you to go higher. Your mistakes are under the blood of Jesus. They're under the blood. So, you know, in that moment, I'm sure Abraham was questioning the destination. Have you ever questioned the destination when God said, go somewhere or do something? And you go, you got the wrong person. <laughs> like, don't you know I don't have any self-control? Or don't you know blah, blah, blah? You know how I was raised. No, the destination that God had for Abraham and that he has for you is not a mistake. Let him pick the mountain, let, mountain and let him take you up there. So I believe when Abraham was wrestling with the thought of the destination, I feel like he probably did this right here. I bet he went back to what God said in Genesis 17. Come on, we got to go back to what did God say. That's how you're going to get to your destination. What did he say over your life? This is what he said to Abraham over his life. He said, Abraham, I will make you the father of nations. You can trust me in this destination. You hearing me? You can trust me in this destination because I told you I was going to make you the father of nations. What has God said to you? Did he say he was going to give you a child, Terry? Did he do it? He provided. He came through. You had to go back time and time again when you were praying in faith going up the mountain. I believe God's going to send me a child. I believe you're telling me I'm going to be a parent. Ooh. I hope y'all are getting that. What has he said about you? What Did he say, I'm going to bring you out of drug addiction. I'm going to bring you out of uh, alcoholism. I'm going to bring you out of poverty. What did he say to you? He says, come up here. Remember what I said to you down at the bottom. It'll give you the strength to go higher. God wants to strengthen his people. He wants to strengthen our weak legs because I'm just like you. I get tired. I sometimes feel like I want to quit and it's too hard, but we have to go back and remember, what did he say about you, Michael Owens? What did he say about you, Adam Johnston? Yeah. Ooh, I could go to crying right now. Because yeah. this woman knows what he said about him. Yeah. And when they can't remember what God said, yeah. he's going to send a mama. Oh, Rabbi, so dead in the king. He's going to send somebody to remind you. I'm sorry, I'm preaching like a mad woman. But he, I told you, you can't give somebody what you don't have. And I have been with the Lord. <laughs> and he wants to take us higher. I'm one of the crazy people at the top, I know, and you just want to go stay up there, sister. Don't come away. <laughs> I understand. I'd be scared of me too, probably. But Justin put me up here, so here I am. I told you we had good elders. They trusted me. And they said, get up there, girl. So I was like, okay. Here I am, God. All right, let me get back on track here. Woo, when I talk about my kids, oh, man, it gets me every time. Whew. I got to I got to get off of that, though. Can't be thinking about my babies. I got my baby in the back, too. Can't be thinking about my kids right now. I'm going to preach this sermon, get this over with, get y'all out of here. All right, so Abraham, he climbed the mountain. He said, I'm going to reach my destination. I admit where I'm at. I'm going to reach my destination. He said, you know what? I'm going to make the preparations. 
I'm going to do whatever's necessary to get where God's telling me to get to. See, we don't want to mess with that right there. It starts getting a little messy, getting a little hard, and we really don't want to be bothered. We just want to get to the top and do it our way. His ways are higher than our ways. So he's going to require that we do it his way. You know, if I was Abraham in this situation, and I was prepping, you can see it in the scripture where he's prepping, he's getting his donkey, he's getting the wood, um, he's getting his two servants, I mean, he's getting everything prepared so that they can go up the mountain. But if I was him, I probably would have wanted to just put a little ram in my backpack or something. You know, I'd have tried to find me some kind of sacrifice besides my son. I just stuffed my backpack full of something. So when I got up there, I might not, you know, God might say, okay, I'm going to let you do it your way. Pull out the ram out of your backpack. I wish it was that easy. But when God says he wants you to do it his way, church, when he wants pursue church to do it his way, then we have to obey God. Okay? And that's what Abraham did. He made the preparations. You know what? And as they got higher, and closer to the destination, to the top. Abraham even had to tell the two servants that he took along with him, you guys are going to have to stay down here because me and my son, we got to go up a little higher. There are times in life when you're going up higher, if you keep some people around you, they'll try to talk you out of things. They'll try to talk you out of the will of God for your life. They'll try to talk you down. Woo, come off the edge, baby. Come off the ledge. You need to step on back. Now, nobody said you was going to be, you know, called to whatever, to be the president. You need to come on back. You think somebody probably told uh, Joe Biden? I'm sure they did. Come back. I didn't mean to go there, but come off the ledge, Joe. Step it back, baby. Somebody needs to help him. Stay off the ledge. I didn't mean to go there either. But Abraham said, my two friends, Kevin, that was for you. <laughs> Abraham said, my two friends, I've taken you thus far, but you're going to have to just stay right here. There's business me and the boy got to take care of. So they go all the way up there, and, and Isaac is saying, but where's the sacrifice? We got to go up here and worship, but where's the sacrifice? And you know the story. He tells him, he says, the Lord will provide. Now, I don't know about you, but when I'm traveling a mountain like, you know, that, and God's asking that of me, I don't know if my faith would be this strong right here. He didn't waver. He did not waver. He said, it's okay, Isaac. God is going to provide. Church, God is going to provide for pursuit church financially. Look around. There's not very many of us in here today. But you know what I know? God will provide for pursuit church. He will provide for you because he's good like that. Okay. Let me move on here. So we've got the location, the destination. We've got preparation. But oh, the most beautiful thing that happens at the top. When he reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar verse 9, there, and he arranged the wood on it, and he bound his son Isaac, and he laid him on the altar on the top of the wood. And then he reached his hand up, and he took the knife to, to slay his son. But then the angel of the Lord called out to him again and, and said, Abraham. And you know what? Abraham said, here I am. He went back to answering God, what's your location? His location was obedience. His location was obedience. At this time, we see Abraham at a higher level of obedience. He's not at the bottom of the mountain. Obedience got him to the top. Obedience will get you to the top. Just do what he's asking you to do, and you will get to the top. Abraham arrived at his destination right on time. And then God showed up and gave him the revelation that he is Jehovah Jireh, my provider. That's the first time that's mentioned. Abraham got that revelation because he said, I'm going to go up. I'm going to obey God. And he is the father. 
of many nations. And we got this revelation right here in the word of God because a man said, I'm willing to climb. I'm willing to go up and do whatever you're asking me to do, God. Because you know what? Other people are counting on you. Have you ever thought about that? We wouldn't have this scripture right here in the Bible if Abraham would have disobeyed God. Yeah, he could have used someone else and put another story in there in his place. But Abraham obeyed God, and it affected many, many people. Your obedience will affect many, many people. And so the Lord Jehovah Jireh is my provider. And he says, come on up, because the view from the top is different than what you saw down at the bottom. There is a different view from the top. I mean, from, yeah, at the top, at the top. So, Lord, we thank you that you are calling us. We thank you that the mountain is calling. The upward calling is stronger than the downward craving. We thank you, God, that we're going to examine our heart and find out where, what location we're at. We can't hide from God. We can't play games. Show us our location, God. Show us have we truly accepted you as our Savior. Have we even taken the first step to acknowledge, Jesus, that you've died for my sins? It has to start there. I believe there are many people in the church that even skip the salvation experience and go right up on the worship team. They go right out on the serving line. Because they want to be a part of a team. They want to be a part of something. So instead of really truly having an encounter with Christ, they just jump into a church and think they're fine. Is that making sense to you guys? We don't want to be a church like that. We want to deal with reality. Where are we at with God? Is there still some sin and junk in my life? Have I truly surrendered to you completely? Are you truly my Savior? We have to examine our heart and see the true location. I, I know it's time to go. My goodness, it's time to go. Maybe I should preach more often so it won't be so long. I don't know. <laughs> no, answer to that. If you're wondering, let me know. But I do have to highlight this right here. So we're all familiar with King David. And we just think about, oh, my gosh, he slayed Goliath. You know, oh, he's awesome. He was a man after God's own heart. We think about all the good things, you know, the giant slayer and all this. But in the process of uh, thinking about climbing the mountain and the mountains are calling, I went back to the, to the story in 2 Samuel where it said that David climbed up the gutter to get to the top of Mount Zion. He, David in that situation did not have a glorious mountain to climb where everybody was watching him. I'm the king. There were still some at that point where, that were not acknowledging, acknowledging him as a king. And he didn't say, I'm going to go up this mountain and everybody's going to know I'm the king. I'm going to stop this foolishness. He didn't have a heart like that. But God showed him a stronghold. God showed him a, a city at the top where there were lame and blind people, and there was discomfort and, and chaos up there. And the only way up that mountain was through the miry, mucky, uh, yucky clay. It says it was like a gutter. It, it actually says it was a water shaft, so a small crawl space. David did it. And I thought, Lord, would I be willing to do that? I hate tight places. I hate dirty stuff like that. Would I be willing to climb a mountain in that fashion? We want the we want the mountain where it's glorious. We don't want the dirty, dirty, the dirty ride. But you know what? Some of you out there, your ride has been much like David. Your climb has been like David's. It has been um, dirty. It's been hard. It's been behind the scenes. Just stay encouraged. Be encouraged. Don't give up. Don't give up because God wants to take you higher. I, uh, I read 
a little story about um, this. Well, about um, I'm trying to put this um, living above the snake line. Have you ever heard that phrase? Living above the snake line. So the early settlers, when they were looking for territory and land, they said that they were they wanted to live above the snake line because in the lower valley there was lots of snakes. So the higher they would go, they didn't have to deal with snakes. Come on, church. We need to live above the snake line. You know that's what that's going to require? It's going to require some climbing. And it's going to require some deliverance. <laughs> because we get so complacent and thinking I'm okay down here. And we just keep letting the world nip at us. You know, and we give in and we give in to the downward craving instead of going to the pressing towards the upward call. But God, God wants us to live above. So remember that this week. He wants to take you above the snake line. That doesn't mean you're not going to have some hard things happening because there's still going to be the hard things. But you're not going to have to lay your head down not thinking there's snakes all around you. That's just awful to think about. So God, we thank you that you are taking us higher. And it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth the climb. It may be strenuous. But it is going to be worth it. So we thank you, Father. We're not going to be satisfied down here at ground zero. We're not going to be satisfied with our love level being very minimal. You know, we're not going to be satisfied carrying around unforgiveness. Lord, we want to drop these things so that we can go higher. I, I had had to make a decision on what song to play at the end, and so I had like five. No, it was really like four. <laughs> and I know it's time to go, so you're going to be able to leave in just one second. Um, I want to play the Misty Edwards, It's Going to Be Worth It song. Because it, it truly is going to be worth it. There's nothing that you're going to be called to leave behind. You know, that's going to be more satisfying than what's going to be in the presence of the Lord. And about four years ago, the Lord spoke these words to me. And he said, it's time to come out of the dirt. And you're probably thinking all kinds of things, but what does that mean? He said, it's time to come out of the dirt. And I knew what it meant. It meant, Kaylin, you've always taken care of the poor. You, and this is not about me. I'm not telling you this. This is this is because I'm, I feel like the Lord wants you to come out of the dirt. That's the only reason I'm telling you a personal story. Right? But he said, I want you to come out of the dirt. And meaning, you've always worked food pantry. You've always worked with the poor. You, you love the orphan. Um, you've, you've, you've worked, um, you know, with children, um, and to me, it wasn't a, a downgrade or anything, he was just telling me, this is where you've been, behind the scenes, working in the, the dirt, okay, and, and he was saying, I want you to come out of that, and I'm taking you higher, and I didn't want to, I like my dirt just fine, I did, I still do, I like my dirt, I like playing the dirt. When it's, when it's not 115 degrees outside. I like to make sure like it was this past Wednesday. But, um, so then it was like two, it was four months ago almost to the day that he said that to me. And then like a month later, I get a phone call from THV. And they say, we want to do a little uh, premiere on your weekend food for kids. So we want to come down. And, and do a little clip on the news. I was mortified. I was like, there is no way I'm going to be on TV. Uh-uh. No. I'm staying right here in the dirt, God. I am not going to this. I was terrified. I did terrible, by the way. My uh, brother Terry rescued us. I, I was not good. It's not good. I was so scared. That, I don't know why. It just terrified me to do that. 
But um, Terry did save the day. He was beautiful on TV. You know, he's on commercials. And so uh, that did truly happen. Come out of the dirt, then I get the call, and I do that. And it's good. God used it. We raised money, and we're still thriving with that program. And then from there, I kept hearing the Lord say, okay, that's good. Come on. And, um, and God has moved me around, and I, and I have had to come out of my comfort zone. And I've had to come out of the dirt. And, you know, he's, I believe he's saying that to us. What dirt are you playing in? Mine was, you know, I, I wanted to stay back here, play it safe. I wanted to give a little prophetic word occasionally, you know, when the keys were playing. <laughs> um, and I'm like, okay, God, I just want to be obedient to whatever it looks like. And, and he's saying that to us. Come out of the dirt. Yours may be sin, and you just, you know, haven't been able to admit your location, and you think you can just keep playing around <laughs> I'm telling you, it's going to be worth it to let it go. You're going to find peace. You're going to find uh, a revelation like Abraham did when you say, I'm going to climb the mountain. The mountain is calling on us higher. He wants you to come out of the dirt. Your dirt is different than my dirt. But we say yes, Lord. So let's stand to our feet.